Just like the coastal countries of the West African sub-region, Benin is heavily affected by cyclical floods, along with induced damage such as destruction of crops and houses, loss of livestock, and sometimes claims of lives. This year, through the early warning system, the Ministry of Interior in charge of public security and religious affairs was quick to blow the whistle. It is to be noted that the risk of Weme River flooding in the lower valley is currently high and the recorded water level is respectively 805 and 870 centimeters in Bonu and Zanyanado. That is why the Minister of Interior in charge of public security and religious affairs, chairman of National Organization for Climate Adaptation, Natural Disaster and Risk Prevention, took the decision to raise the warning level to red, and this could be maintained over the next four days. People living in flood-prone communities, namely Kove, Zanyanado, Wenhi, Bonu, Ajon, Dangbu, Porto Novo, Agege, Soava, Semepoji and Kotonou are therefore signaled on time to seek shelter as they are informed in anticipation they take necessary protective measures under the guidance of local authorities thanks to the information provided by the sub-project which is put in place an effective data analysis system. The system comprises three essential phases. The first phase is to ensure the collection of field data carried out by about 20 observers who measure the river levels on a daily basis and send the data via text message. The second phase has to do with data recovery and processing. As all text messages are saved on a central server which compiles this data and restores them in the form of curves and graphs. The third phase is the analysis of the data processing results to ascertain whether at certain stations the threshold, the critical values are reached. And if these values are exceeded, then the appropriate warning level is set to yellow, amber, red, in addition to the last level, which is green, should the situation be normal. The early warning system is therefore a rapid and proactive response which allows triggering response measures, controlling both damage and the number of flood victims. In the absence of early warning system for multi-hazard prevention, Benin equipped herself with a weather and meteorological centric water system. It is actually a very simple system based on water levels recorded at hydropower plant and with support from the university, we have been able to create systems so as to anticipate both water levels and forecast early warnings. Being already very active on the ground for the implementation of risk prevention activities, SAP project relies on community stakeholders who are mostly concerned with floods. In its own approach, the project aims at involving community stakeholders much in the issue of early warning. When talking about disasters risk prevention, it often includes all action and measures to be taken by the authority for preventing the occurrence of such a disaster, or at least for diffuse adverse effects. In view of promoting the national warning message, sub-project managers regularly conduct information campaigns through meeting with the population. The purpose of such campaigns is to urge the population comply with security measures and to keep away from floods. On September 7, 2014, we had 7-1-0 in Malanville, and on Weme River from Beteru to Ajohun, we read both yesterday and today, 795. The intertropical front will revolve around 19 degrees north with the withdrawal of the St. Helen high pressure and moisture transfer towards atmospheric mid layers. Consequently, there will be storm like activities from Colines region up to South Niger. 
This morning, information reaching the Cross-Institutional Forecasting and Warning Unit indicate that the red warning threshold was reached at the lower Weme Valley, mainly at the meteorological observation post located in Bonu, where there is a large area spreading from the river. Thus, work conducted this day revealed that the situation has gone in the red and will remain in the red for probably three to four days ahead. With the system in place, thanks to sub project, the populations of designated flood prone areas are now signaled of the rise in water level in their communities. In fact, warning messages have really relieved the populations as these messages facilitate local authorities' early mobilization. At the time I am speaking, the entire Agege Lake City is already flooded and part of the population is threatened by the disaster. Water level has reached 10 centimeters in some homes, and this is the concern for both the community council and the mayor that I am. We did not sit idly. Instead, we already updated our contingency plan by taking the first step, which is training and creating awareness. So, with the early warning system put in place by sub-project, the populations of the 12 flood-prone communities are no more surprisingly visited by water. District chief executives and mayors of concerned communities are also engaged in taking all necessary measures not only to vacate the river banks but also to secure people and their assets from waters. The mobilization system is operational and stakeholders are currently playing information monitoring role. On the direction of my minister, I've come to hold discussions with elected local officials. We made district chief executive I've come to provide local officials with information which they will convey to their populations. Various information collected from the warning system help not only to prevent communities from flood, but also they help determine the sea progress rate at our coast since 2011. Several findings emerge from the compiled and analyzed information on coastal erosion. Almost the entire coastal area is threatened by coastal erosion, but there are critical areas. The Lakonji area, where we are currently, Jonji area, and the eastern part of Kotonou are, to a large extent, threatened by coastal erosion. The sea moved us five kilometers away. About a month ago, our homes were completely flooded. Our belongings were soaked. But then, in Hilakonji area, there is an accelerating pace of the phenomenon. This is due to flood protective structures constructed in Aniho. But once these structures are put up, the sediment, Hilakonji area has become a source of supply for these sediments. The SAP project is considered as an instrument for development and fight against poverty, and it is permanently fighting against the five hydroclimatic risks such as floods, drought, rising sea level, coastal erosion, and strong winds. In fact, through responses via the project, grassroots communities can save their homes, their crops, their livestock, and even their lives. Grateful communities do appreciate the actions taken by the project. Formerly, we used to be surprised by floods alongside with a lot of damage. But with the system put in place, we are now able to take adequate precautions. We are calling on authorities to provide us with mosquito nets. SAP project has a satisfactory track record at mid-term point. Apart from the populations benefiting from the positive effects of its response, development partners praised the early results. Looking at the first activities of this early warning system, which was set up, we can confidently say that in terms of national forecasting and warning capacity building, it was a plus for the country as, through the system, all national institutions involved in disaster crisis forecasting, especially those of climate-related, 
were brought under the same umbrella at country level. Today, all these institutions work in perfect harmony. They prepare data, interpret them, and help the authorities to take necessary precautions so that what we experienced in 2010 and 2012 at country level is never experienced again. Forced to learn how to live with floods, populations of highly affected communities find in a sub-project for early warning system a way of preventing flood-related losses. Our government, very concerned about the situation, is planning together with neighboring countries holistic and sustainable solutions. In Benin, we are preparing ahead. The government of Dr. Boniyai, through His Excellency Minister Kasa, and in synergy with ABN member states, put up many projects. Among others, climate change adaptation and integrated project, community infrastructure development for food security project, water resources development and ecosystem sustainable management project are actually working to erect water reservoirs everywhere upstream, these areas which are now under threat. Such structures will help the populations use this water to contribute to development instead of such water becoming a nuisance to their lives. For now, we cannot avoid flooding, so prevention and warning are best responses in order to enable flood-affected populations live normal life and ward off bad luck.